So this plantation here is the one that I want to sow the daisies and primroses on. As you can see, this is a line of scrub plums here, but they get a lot of sun. It's not even 11 o'clock in the morning on a winter day, and the sun is already here. And the sun will be here for most of the day. So it'll track across the field or sky. It'll track across the sky that way. And it sets during the summer months over there. No, actually it sets over there somewhere. So in the winter months, it sets over there. So basically what I'm doing is planting the daisies and primroses where they would like to be naturally and I'm just encouraging them to grow. And let me pick my bucket up and go up this row. And in here, I have, this is a uh, rowan. And down here is one of my self-sown walnuts. This is a walnut tree here. They grow very, very slowly. This here is a spindle. And then this is a Gilda Rose. Oh no, this is a spindle. Sorry, I'm mixing my species. That's a spindle as well. This is a spindle. This is a Gilda Rose. This is a Gilda Rose. Here's a Gilda Rose. So I'm gonna plant, I've already put some bluebells here. You can see those bluebells I planted in here um, a while ago, just as bulbs. So they're coming up. And there's, which is this? Oh, this is um, a primrose. I just decided this is the natural primrose that is, you know, the kind of wild primrose. So I'm gonna slowly fill. This is yarrow that I transplanted from somewhere else. And there's some yarrow, old yarrow, you can see that was planted here last year and grew. So slowly but surely, this will, it'll have lots of flora, flowers like daisies and primroses and oxide daisies, which just go like crazy. So in a few years, this alleyway will just be nothing but oxide daisies, yarrow, uh, evening primroses, um, as well as the trees that I've planted, like this spindle growing up. And then there's another right there is a walnut that I grew from nut. So I grew them from a walnut tree that my grandfather planted many, many years ago. So I'm gonna plant these all the way scattered along in here. And hopefully we'll have a sort of display this year. And then next year it'll be um, even bigger as they self-sow in this bark mulch, which will be fodder to them. So this is what I'm hoping to do. Anyway, here we go. Amazingly, the first place I dug, look at all these larvae and worms. Look at that packet of larvae. So just in this one place, I dug down with this tool. You can see there's a larvae sitting on the edge of the tool. So there's loads of them in here. So this is what the birds come and get out. Look at that, worms and larvae all through this. Really rich biodiversity here in the soil. That's what we need. That's what we need. Because that, that helps feed the birds. So, when a plant is native to an area, like these oxide daisies, they're native. You can be really rough in a sense. In a sense, you can be really rough when you're planting. Basically, what I'm doing is popping the soil up, placing it in, squishing it around it again, popping the soil up, putting it in between the crevices, and just squishing it in. It's very, a quick kind of planting. And basically it stimulates 
because the plant is going to be in its native soil, in its native climate, it's, you can be really rough with the seedlings because the roughness actually stimulates them. It's like when an animal is grazing grass, there's a trigger that stimulates the grass to grow again and more strongly. It's that kind of a thing occurs. So I just pop it up, place it in, and then on this end, I can put another one. And also there's so many of them that it doesn't matter how rough I am because if they don't all make it, that's life. The decomposition of this plant in the soil will be food to either insects or microbiology or any of those other kinds of things. So doing it quickly with such a bucket full of stuff is could be time consuming or you just do it quick, shove it in, quick, shove it in, there you go, and that's done. That's two planted. But it's this kind of thing, it, when, a, when you have to be precious with the plant is when it's not native. When it's a not native species, then you have to be precious because you want it to live in a climate that its genetic makeup was not born, bred, and evolved in. So when it's a native, you can be as rough as you like, as long as you don't tear the roots off or something like that. So that's me planting rough as you go, um, oxide daisies and evening primroses. So just chuck it in and there's that one. And there's two, that's one primrose and one daisy. So in here I have, oh, there's another primrose. I think I'll put this one over here because there's nothing over here. Pop it up, put it in, squish it down. And then here's a daisy. I'll put next to it, pop. I'm gonna take this bit of grass out, put it over the fence because I want this all to be flowers to begin with because I don't want grasses to overwhelm. Grasses can overwhelm and overshadow the young trees and shrubs that I have in here. I got them as bare-rooted, tiny babies. So the grasses can take over, whereas these herbs, if you will, the daisies and primroses, will protect them and shelter them in a kind of shade, whereas grasses can over-engulf them. Anyway, there we go. Well, you can't really see anything. My bucket is empty. My tool is done. But there's lots of them planted about the place. There's another walnut tree. So give it another couple of weeks. And hopefully, you can see another daisy there. Hopefully, these will all start sprouting out uh, and accelerating in growth. So there's a stretch of it there. You can only see my divots in the... Um, wood chip and, and soil to see where I planted them. So I didn't start at the bottom. I started, where did I start? I started about there at that stake. So I've done a stretch of planting and hopefully we'll be able to see the results later this year.